Hey guys, Dr. Ben here, Functional Medicine Centers. Let's do a live Q&A today. We've got a lot of questions that have been coming in, so I'm gonna give everybody that's jumping on live first dibs at those questions, and then we've got a whole bunch that people have been asking all week, and really just you know health questions of any anything at all. Let me know if there's certain uh, parts of it I can't answer because of the powers that be. We will, uh, unfortunately, not to be able to answer some of those, but everything else is fair game. I'm gonna jump in and uh, we're just gonna ask questions. So drop down below where you guys are, uh, are watching from um, and any questions as well, and I'll be scrolling through those and seeing what comes up. So welcome. Functional medicine, all about getting to the underlying why. So all of this thought process, when you ask these questions, I want you to continue, even if you see somebody else's question, why? Why is the body not working like it's supposed to? Why is this system out of balance? Why are we seeing the damage, all these different things and it's not just a oh let's uh, let's come up with this magic juju berry but let's come up with why that system is out of balance so um, yes Gina it is all about the why J think about this um, can't sleep natural world take melatonin is that fixing it no that's not fixing it. Um, it if you've got digestive issues take enzymes is that fixing it? No, you've got to take that step back and get to the underlying why. So that's what we're going to be we're going to be asking uh, some of these questions, and we'll be answering some of those. So um, one of these, uh, let's go. Uh, acid reflux. So I got acid reflux from taking a medication, stop taking the pill, but still have the reflux. Is there a way to completely get rid of it or just manage it? So here's here's something um, that you look at for uh, acid reflux. You're going to think about it as we have X amount of stomach acid in the stomach, and uh, it needs to be there so that it can break food down, move it through. Once it reaches a certain acidity, it moves through and, and clears out into the small intestine. If you're getting acid reflux, you've got one of two things going on. One, the valve is not closing like it's supposed to. So if you're not closing that valve like you're supposed to, reflux, that stomach acid, is going to be able to push back up into the throat. So one of the things that you've got to look for is a hiatal hernia. If there's anybody around you that does structural work, they can do uh, work on that hiatal hernia. You need to relax your diaphragm, that muscle in there, and also work on the vagus nerve, which is gag reflex, gag gargle hum, some of those things. The other thing is that you do not want to be drinking fluids with your meals without acid reflux, and you want to make sure you're not combining proteins and carbs at the same meal. So acid reflux, you want to make sure that you're not combining at those times. So I'm going to scroll back up through here and see what we've got. Um, is the nebulizer safe for four to 10 year olds and how long do you nebulize each time? Um, so uh, Debbie, the nebulizer, again, you know, I can't make specific recommendations that I don't, want, you know, that's not my patient, anything like that, but the nebulizer has been shown to be safe for young children. Um, you know, again, it's an individualized thing. And how long, um, you know, for the kids, I would do uh, maybe a quarter to half of the amount that you're doing for an adult and maybe uh, five to 10 minutes on those as well. So. Um, yes, that will be good there. Uh, how much quercetin should one take daily? How about zinc, vitamin D, and C? So here's the thing with supplements, especially vitamin D, is that you need to be between 60 and 80 for your vitamin D. If you start out at 10 or 30 or 50, you're gonna need different amounts. So you've got to check your vitamin D levels and then you'll know how much to take and then you test again and then if you're up in the 60 to 80 range, great, you're doing really, really good. So um, vitamin D, you've got to test zinc. Uh, 50 to 75 milligrams is a pretty standard dosage. Vitamin C, um, around 1,000 milligrams per day is a pretty standard dosage. And quercetin, uh, if you're getting an over-the-counter brand, um, usually one to two um, that will be good on those. Let me scroll through here. Hey, Misty, good to see you. Um, why do some foods spike you high and drop you low right away while others keep you high for a longer period of time? Leah, great to see you. Um, uh, Dylan's been working hard on those coasters. He's got some, uh, got some good ones coming to you guys. So, um, why does some food spike? Well, here's the thing, is that some people can do totally fine with, uh, 
they'll do totally fine with sweet potato and other people will not do okay with sweet potato. And some people do fine with banana. Other people do not do fine with banana. So, um, and it's usually this, the higher glycemic that food is, the more it's a um, starch, grain, sweet, something like that, it will usually spike higher and faster and then the body kicks out that insulin and pulls it down faster. Where certain things, like if you do more of a complex carbohydrate, it may go high, not as high, but it's going to stay high longer through there. So, you know, it, it's not so much just that spike and crash that's the problem. Um, I would rather have somebody go up to 130, drop down to 80 within 30 minutes than hit 120 for three hours, like some types of, of complex carbs are doing. So you've got to uh, figure out which foods do that, but also buffer it. Protein, fat are going to be really good buffers so that it does not uh, spike up and crash down too low. Erica in Rome, good to see you. Christy, um, son has digestive pain in, in the stomach, burning in the chest, not uh, heartburn and daily headaches, age 19 causes. Christy, I always say we see just as many teens and 20-something year olds as we do 50 and 60 year olds. Uh, if I see a 19, 20, 21 year old coming in, nine times out of 10, they have a major digestive issue. I've seen 20 bowel movements a day. I've seen people vomiting every day for a year straight. We've seen um, amazingly horrendous things with uh, this age group, especially with their digestive tract. Again, we've got to take a step back. We've got to look at the inflammatory process in the body. Is there autoimmune? We've got to look at blood sugar, look at leaky gut, look at how the liver's doing. And we just start going step by step through that process, figuring out where those systems are out of balance and start reversing that. And usually even within 30 days, somebody's digestion is changing dramatically. Unfortunately, there's no magic enzyme that's gonna fix it. Uh, you know, there may be certain foods, an allergy elimination diet would be a good place to start as well on that one. Um, and we've got Mary, um, good to see you there. Mary, Toby, great to see you as well. Um, Angie in Mexico, good to see you. Hope things are well down in Mexico and you guys are, are rocking it. Carol, can thyroid be healed or do I need some medication for the rest of my life? What is the harmful side effect of the prescription? So um, thyroid medication, you know, it really depends on what's going on. If somebody has Hashimoto's, which is autoimmune thyroid that they've been attacking their thyroid gland, there is a very good chance, especially if it's been there five, 10, 15 years, that they're not going to be able to ever truly heal enough that they will be able to get off the medication. Because remember, autoimmune is destroying that thyroid tissue, just like the, the uh, pancreas, which kicks out insulin, is going to be type one diabetes. You know, when you reach a certain point of damage there, you're not gonna kick out enough insulin and you need external insulin with type one diabetes. Same thing with thyroid. If it's Hashimoto's, somebody may need to be on medication the rest of their life that thyroid may not grow back as much as it's supposed to or you'd like to. Uh, what harmful side effects? Of all medication out there, there's way worse things that you could be on versus thyroid medication. So if you're on a thyroid medication, don't stress about it. Just get on the one that you feel the best with, that your numbers are the best, that your weight's better at, um, and, and stay there. And if you need to change because of T3, T4, whatever it is, then you can modify things. But don't stress about thyroid medication, really not as bad as a lot of other medications out there. Remember, it's just a, uh, a hormone. B, is there contraindications for taking echinacea and elderberry if you have COVID? I've heard it can initiate the, the flare. Um, so the again, in those first uh, seven days, those are both gonna be fine to do, to kick that in. But long-term, um, no, there is some concern of the echinacea and elderberry could stimulate that uh, cytokine storm. So um, if everybody around you is getting sick or if you let, see a spike, you know, here's the great news, is that we're now on the, on the downward trend of this, uh, this spike here with the Delta variant and all that. Even though President Biden's gonna be coming out today and saying these six things and we've gotta do all this to help the Delta variant, you know what, it's on its way out. If you look at the look at the trends, it's the same, same wave. It's way lo lower than December, January. It looks very similar actually to last summer. And, um, 
And with that, even the fatality rate, very, very low compared to what it has been in the past. So, you know, they're kind of, they're probably six weeks too late if they really wanted to do anything. Um, so unfortunately, uh, they're, they're too late. Any, anything that they're talking about today is not going to be applicable to Delta. It's already, that wave is already passed. So, um, unfortunately that's where we're at in this situation. And, and, uh, you know, that there was no, no real, you know, nobody was on the ball with this whole thing, but that's a whole nother video. We'll get to that one. Um, why does a young, healthy year old male continue to get shingles virus? My youngest son had COVID. Um, so remember this, uh, we know that with COVID, um, a reactivation of Epstein-Barr is a huge part of the, the long hauler symptoms. So to get a shingles virus, which is the chickenpox virus, uh, reactivated, totally possible. We have a 27 year old patient, um, I can show you the video later. Uh, when she moved up here from Dallas to work with us, she had had shingles 13 times by the time she was 27. And by the, uh, by the time we got her totally fixed up, she had had it 18 times. It was fewer, um, fewer cases o over a certain period of time. They were less intense but she went from walking crutches and this uh, uh, spinal stimulator for pain to uh, she just sent me a video uh, two days ago that she was up in the mountains hiking around these jagged rocks for an hour straight no sling no cane nothing at all and her body healed so here's the deal um, what what you've got to do Larry is you've got to take that why, why is that body going haywire? Sure, COVID stimulated this maybe, but now the body is not strong enough to suppress that virus again. So that's what we did with the other patients. We just went through system by system by system by system and got her body strong enough to be able to keep down the shingles virus. People get shingles because they're stressed, they're tired, they're run down, whatever it is. And so somehow, some way, that's what's going on with your kiddo there. Uh, hope that helps. Uh, Sherry, good to see you out there in Bayard. Just talked to three patients this week from Bayard, Nebraska, if anybody knows where that is. Um, what happens if you take too much vitamin D? You really don't want to get over 100 on your vitamin D. Um, if you just Google vitamin D uh, excess side effects, there's uh, different things out there. Um, so just be, be careful if you are taking vitamin D, you want to make sure that you are uh, getting that. Um, so you've got CGM. My ranges are staying between 55 and 85. We'll spike up to the one 20s and um, sorry Misty I can't see the rest of that um, and so th tell me what else you're saying there uh, so it says we'll spike up to the 120s with certain things so uh, if you got any specific questions there send that again um, it cut off half of that one um, so Misty's talking about the continuous glucose monitor, which is a great way of something we use with all of our patients now to really keep them steady in that range. Can inflammatory and other health problems uh, be related to dental health? Yes, for some people, if you have chronic root canal, if you've got um, infection in your gums, anything at all in the mouth, there's in acupuncture, each tooth is related to a different meridian, different organ system, uh, different body part. There's a lot of different things that have to do with the teeth. Um, it's not the be all and end all. I've seen some people spend $30,000 on, on uh, mouth work, teeth work, and not get any change to their health. And other people have had some really good things. But if you have an active infection, a chronic infection in your mouth, you've got to get it taken care of. And I would recommend seeing a biologic dentist. Um, what is the best sweetener? I don't use um, any of my coffee. Uh, you know, stevia is probably about the best one that you can do. You can do monk fruit, do coconut sugar, some things like that. But ultimately, anything that doesn't make the blood sugar go up, um, as long as it's not artificial and uh, any of, even the erythritols are a little bit iffy, they can cause some GI distress. So, um, yeah, stevia, make sure you're getting it from a good source as well. Um, what do you think of the uh, uh, clonal antibodies if someone gets to the point um, in their illness. Uh, you know, from what I've seen so far, they do have a positive effect and um, some people are, are doing well with them. So I would definitely keep it on your radar if it would get to that point. And let's see, my thyroid levels are normal, but my histamine levels uh, are off. So Susan, if somebody's histamine is out of balance, usually that's an inflammatory process in the body. So you've got your symptom line and everything is just jacked it up so much 
that it doesn't take much to go up over that and get a histamine uh, flare in there. So ultimately you've got to take down all these other systems, all these other, uh, other areas out of balance so that even if you do get a flare or you get exposed to some allergens or whatever, it's going to take a whole lot to get up over that histamine level. So anybody out there, if you're looking into histamine things, it's usually still a full body thing that is causing that, that flare. Um, and Amy, uh, can kids take quercetin? What would be an appropriate dose? I know adults can take 500, can take, kids take 250? Yes, again, I can't recommend that your, your child take quercetin, but I have not read any, uh, any research showing that there's problems with kids taking the quercetin, especially short term around, um, around exposures to, to bacteria, viruses, things like that. So that would be fine. Um, let's see what else we have here. And again, anybody jumping on, pop down questions below. This is a Q and A. Um, if there aren't any more, I'll start getting into ones that people are asking. Um, uh, thanks for the kind words there, Gina. Um, uh, summer, the angry reaction, that's okay. Uh, what is the safe dosage for vitamin D for kids and teens? Um, so again, you've got to test. It's really, really hard. If you were just going to do it across the board and you weren't going to test somebody, 8 to 14 year old, probably 1 to 2,000 um, would be safe without without a concern of it going up too much. Um, but really, if you're going to be giving somebody a therapeutic dose on vitamin D, you've got to get those levels tested and see if they're in that 60 to 80 level. Uh, Let's see here. I was curious. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Best way to supplement vitamin, vitamin Bs. Um, you know, you can do some uh, some wheat germ um, can be helpful for that. Some brewer's yeast can be helpful for that. Otherwise, just straight B vitamins. As long as somebody doesn't have a MTHFR deficit, uh, and then they would want to get some methylated Bs. Um, <laughs> Teresa, uh, I cannot talk about that one on here. Um, you know, there are a lot of different reports that you can you can read on, but um, unfortunately, I cannot talk about that. Um, Yep, yeah, Larry, uh, let us know. Yeah, well, send us a direct message and we can talk more specifically about that, Larry. Uh, reactions to vitamin D, two different occasions, but it was two different brands. Um, so if somebody has reactions to vitamin D, we've seen this a lot on here, go ahead and start doing canning booth. So um, once a week, go find a tanning booth, and even the older school that doesn't uh, filter out all the rays, uh, get an old school tanning, tanning bed membership, do once a week, and that vitamin D should come up. Um, and let's see here. Uh, fruit will spike, but sugar levels fall right away. Could my Hashimoto's be acting up? Remember, anytime some, we spike up a bunch, um, that insulin spikes and it can stimulate that autoimmune, stimulate that Hashimoto's misty. So um, fruit, try to buffer it, apple and almond butter, or do a slice of cheese, or you know something with some fat and protein, see if that will buffer uh, that blood sugar spike, and that could definitely be helpful in there as well. Um, COVID beginning of August, only symptomatic one was my son, whom is um, type 1 diabetes, took ivermectin. I can't see the rest of your message. Go ahead and send me more of that if you've got a question there, Morgan. Um, but sorry, that one was cut off. Husband started getting bad foot cramps at night. Um, Deidre, just start with magnesium. That's a great place to go. The other thing, if you have a massage gun, I'll do a video on that and give you guys a link to one of those. Massage gun where you, you just work through the, the plantar fascia for a good 5-10 minutes every night before bed and that will go away. So that, that would be great. Amy, great to see you there. Um, Graves disease and now being hypothyroid. Uh, did they um, did they take out your thyroid uh, or irradiate it? That would be the question. So if they did, then you basically have to be on thyroid medication. But remember this, Graves is an autoimmune disease. And so you still, just by irradiating or taking out the thyroid, you did not fix why the body was going haywire. So you've got to go through the whole process of calming that down. Because if somebody has autoimmune, just like type 1 diabetes, uh, patient just or a person just asked a little bit of go type 1 diabetic you are going to um, have autoimmune but if you don't fix the autoimmune you just give them insulin you still are going to potentially have autoimmune other places in the body um, and 
Do you like lemongrass for anti-inflammatory? It's not gonna be a significant thing. If you're not fixing why somebody has inflammation, no amount of turmeric, fish oil, lemongrass, anything is going to fix your inflammation unless you calm down that inflammatory reaction in your body as to the why. How do you feel about the studies finding many viruses and bacteria, et cetera, on the masks that children are wearing all day? Sure, I mean, if, if you wear that all day long, it gets soggy. Some, a lot of these kids aren't changing them, but once a week or washing them or whatever, I mean, it, it's pretty disgusting. I, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty yucky. To really be safe with a mask, you would need to be changing it like every hour, um, maybe two hours at the most, just because of that moisture level and infection. And you got, again, we were talking about mouth and all that stuff. So yeah, it's, it's pretty yucky uh, wearing a mask all day. Um, help to, to lower high nighttime cortisol levels and raise low morning levels. Um, ashwagandha would probably be a great place to start for that, Jana. Um, ashwagandha is a, is a nice one to help balance up that now. Um, uh, can all doctors access the specialized antibody testing you just posted? Um, so unfortunately, a lot of the labs out there are doing like one, uh, one marker for the antibodies. For, they're talking about the COVID antibody test. And so unfortunately, um, it's just, uh, yes, any doctor can set up a, a, a contract with Vibrant America. Um, not many do have it, but if you get on their website, um, if you're local to um, Phoenix, uh, Fort Collins, or Nashville, or within a couple hour drive, then we can definitely um, do that in office. But unfortunately, this one, we can't drop ship those. Uh, I guess they you know, wanna make sure it's actually you that's getting the, the antibody test done. Um, let me look at some of these other questions on here. And so hope that helps. Um, parasites, yeah, Gail, parasites are not fun. Um, you've got to do kill off, you've got to build, build back up, um, do, do a lot of different things there. So um, that's a big part of the process. Uh, it's, it's definitely more complicated than, a, um, than I can give you guys right here. So my doctors test my thyroid levels once a year just to keep my prescription current, but really nothing more. So you've got to check Hashimoto's markers, uh, anti-TPO, uh, anti-thyroglobulin. You've got to check your free T3 and free T4, uh, total T3 and total T3. T4 and your reverse T3 and your TSH. And then you might have some ideas as to why your thyroid is out of balance, but you've got to test all of those. How much vitamin D? We just, uh, we already talked about that, Lexi. Um, enough to get you to 60 to 80. So really, um, really bad. I had COVID and have Epstein Barr. Absolutely. So same thing like the we were talking about with shingles. You've got to get that calmed down by building the body up, getting the body as strong as feasibly possible. So uh, you know, it, anybody that's had COVID and has had Epstein Barr in the past, you've got to be able to um, to build that body up, just like we were talking about with shingles. Can you talk about the benefits of taking um, cold showers? Cold showers, um, you know, one kind of, kind of wake you up, but there is an immune effect to it. It can help that immune system. Um, the cold showers, it can be good for uh, blood flow to the brain. Uh, so yes, for a lot of people, you don't have to do the whole thing, but even the last. Uh, 20, 30 seconds of that shower to do it cold. And out here in Colorado, I can tell you this, is a lot colder than in, in Nashville. <laughs> when I was down there last time, I did a uh, cold shower down there. and like, oh, it wasn't too bad. But out here, we got some cold water. So um, definitely beneficial to do some uh, some of those. And Sharon, still some, uh, still so tired and so many flare-ups. Yep, we got to we got to get that dialed in. What causes inflammation? Is it sugar and carbs? That is definitely one of the things, Lexi, that causes inflammation. We see when we balance people's blood sugars out, uh, their inflammation changes dramatically. Their C-reactive protein drops down. They lose 20, 30, 40 pounds. Some huge changes. So yes, blood sugar swings, and that's um, in, in my in my book, Blood Sugar Doesn't Lie, we'll pop a, a link to that down below as well. Amazon, you can uh, pick that one up as well as my uh, Rebuild Your Brain book. Um, about blood sugar, I've got a whole chapter on inflammation in there. Um, 
So, da, 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 and how they continue to protect. Please, Gina, um, I'm not gonna have time. I gotta jump in a minute here. I'm not gonna have time to get into that one. Um, is paleo diet best for lupus? What is the best diet to get the inflammation out? The best diet, here's the best diet, and then I gotta jump, guys. The best diet is the one that's gonna keep your blood sugar steady, 85 to 110 all day long, that's not gonna cause weight gain, that's not gonna create inflammation, and that's gonna keep uh, your digestion where it needs to be. If it falls into all four of those categories, and you can do that on a vegetarian, on a paleo, on a vego, keto, whatever it is, then you're okay. But otherwise, um, it's got to be individualized to you. There is no magic diet. And here in my blood sugar book, you can see how thin that is because there's no diet, there's no menu, there's no meal plan. I'd be lying. It's individualized to you. All right, guys, great having you on. Um, Keep posting questions down below. We'll keep uh, answering these throughout the next few days as well. And we've got a whole list. So we're going to start doing this uh, regularly on a Thursday morning. So bring your questions every Thursday morning. Um, yeah, 8.30 to 8.40. Depends on when I get kids dropped off for school and everything. 8.30 to 8.40 uh, at Mountain Time every Thursday morning. Great to see you guys. And uh, we'll keep up the fight here. Keep that body strong.